Uncle Howdy is back and he isn't alone. The end of WWE Raw saw Uncle Howdy and four other masked beings standing in front of Bray Wyatt's door. Uncle Howdy ended the show by saying we're here before blowing out Wyatt's lantern, closing the show after leaving the backstage area a bloody mess. Shortly after Raw ended, WWE Shop released merchandise related to the group, giving them the name Wyatt Six. As Jey Uso is celebrating his Money in the Bank qualifier win, the lights suddenly went out as Bray Wyatt's door could be seen opening. Nikki Cross crawled out in what appeared to be a new outfit and mask, looking over Wyatt's lantern. The camera that went backstage as a man in a rabbit mask wielding a mallet could be seen standing over several people. The camera then entered the gorilla position, which was destroyed as people were laid out and blood splatter could be seen on the walls. Another masked man was shown sitting in the corner. As the camera entered a nearby hallway, a man in what looked like a gas mask could be seen as more bodies were laying around, one being a bloodied Chad Gable. The camera then revealed Uncle Howdy as he walked through the carnage, the masked men joining him as they walked out on the stage, standing with Cross. Following WrestleMania 40, QR codes had been popping up on Raw, becoming more visible in recent weeks. Last week's code led to a countdown timer that ended on Monday. Reports leading to the reveal had the group consisting of Bo Dallas, Dexter Loomis, Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan, and Nikki Cross. Drew McIntyre has quit in a WWE angle. The former WWE champion walked out of the company on Monday's Raw, then followed up by deactivating his social media profiles. After CM Punk cost Drew the World Heavyweight Championship in a match at Saturday's Clash at the Castle event in Scotland, Drew McIntyre appeared on Monday's Raw to cut a promo. Drew McIntyre briefly mentioned CM Punk, which elicited a reaction from the crowd. Drew then uttered, I can't do this anymore. Screw this company. I quit. Before walking out of the ring, authority figure Adam Pearce tried to stop Drew from exiting, but Drew pushed past him. The angle continued with a brief backstage exchange between Drew and Triple H where the two exchanged some words. CM Punk is said to appear on Friday's SmackDown episode in Chicago to continue his months-long feud with Drew. Some more Raw news. Otis and the rest of Alpha Academy have left Chad Gable. After months of build, Otis finally had enough on Raw. After Chad Gable lost to Braun Strowman, he began to yell at Akira Tozawa and took away Maxine Dupree's crutch. When Otis heard Gable slapping Tozawa, he reacted by shoving Chad Gable to the corner, walking away with the rest of Alpha Academy. Later backstage, Otis was seen packing as Gable entered the room and yelled at him for what happened. Otis replied that they were done with Alpha Academy as he, Maxine, and Akira left the locker room. Chad Gable in response said they were expelled, saying he would win money in the bank and do something that Otis had never done cash in the briefcase successfully. However, who knows if that will still happen since he was taken out at the end of Raw by the Wyatt Six. And last but not least from Raw, Seth Rollins is back. After being gone since WrestleMania, Seth returned to Raw on Monday, opening the show. He and Damian Priest ended up agreeing to a World Heavyweight Championship match at Money in the Bank. Rollins said he had returned for that one reason, and that is to win the championship that he had made. He said he would enter the Money in the Bank ladder match to earn a title match. Priest said he would grant Seth Rollins a title match at Money in the Bank. Rollins thought that Priest's offer was a ruse for the Judgment Day to attack him, but Priest said that the Judgment Day knew nothing about his offer. Seth Rollins accepted, setting up the match for next month. And in case you missed it earlier this week, coming off of Clash at the Castle, WWE stars and chief creative officer Triple H took questions from the media. Here are some of the highlights. Kicking things off with Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, they said that winning the title Saturday in Scotland was something that they had been working so hard for. The fact that it was in Scotland was the icing on the cake. What's a crime? It's <laughs> tears, to be honest. Like, yeah. It's been a long time for us, and we've been working hard to try and get to this point. Um, so I'm emotional, but really happy to be here. Yeah. Right? And it's, we have been working so hard for this, and what makes it extra sweet is it being Scotland, yeah. first Scottish PLE, like, that's just icing on top of it. in front of the fans' names. And my mommy. In your doing mommy. it in front of my mommy. Moving on to the World Heavyweight Champion, Damien Priest. 
The first question was regarding the status of his knee. Damien said that it felt like trash, but hadn't been able to get it checked out by medical staff as he immediately went to the press conference to answer questions. When asked about CM Punk, Damien Priest said he would love to share the ring with him, but he would have to earn it. He also spoke about being champion and having people doubt him. Transitional. <clears throat> Paper. Again, more things to shove down people's throats. Before I was champ, you can't do it. I did it. He can't hold the title. I held it. He can't beat Drew. In Scott, I did it. Drew called me a paper champion. He said I didn't deserve it. He said I couldn't beat him. Everybody thought I was going to lose it. I was just a transitional champion. My ass. Damian Priest is the world heavyweight champion, the face of Monday Night Raw. Against all odds, against all hate, I am the champ. And I'm going to continue being the champ. Moving on to CM Punk. He was touted as a surprise last-minute addition following his appearance in the main event of Clash at the Castle. The first question asked was about his status. He said he was cleared only for referee duty. He mentioned something about a hiccup out there and needed to reassess. However, he said that he had been given permission to skip Raw and Corpus Christi to go to Chicago to get medically cleared. He hopes he can announce that at SmackDown this coming Friday. He also said that since coming back, the climate has changed. It's a completely different culture. He said someone told him he was happy he returned so that he could experience the culture change that has gone down and said they credited CM Punk with starting it. Moving on to Triple H. He said that Clash at the Castle is the biggest arena gate in WWE's history, surpassing the record broken by last month's backlash in France. He said that they would be returning to the United Kingdom this fall. He also praised CM Punk, saying they'd see him back soon. He credited Punk with creating a new atmosphere and brought up how they saw things differently in the past. He can't say how happy he is to have him back. Triple H also said CM Punk was a pleasure to be around. The final question was regarding Chad Gable re-signing. Triple H praised him, saying that he would like to see Gable in WWE forever and perform at the highest level possible. The environment has changed and Chad Gable is part of that change. He's just thrilled that Chad is here where he should be. Well, one, that's very flattering and I'm humbled to, that he would say that. But like the, the truth is, um, he's an amazing performer. I would like for him to be here forever, for him to be able to perform at the highest level, uh, be seen by the most people, have an incredible career, leave here as healthy as possible. Um, the, the, but, but the environment has changed and, and he is a part of that change. Um, so to me it would have been a shame. I would have been sad if he had been here all this time and he just you know, went elsewhere for, for whatever reasons. I would have been happy for him if that was right for him. And I would have uh, wished him incredible success wherever he went. Um, that's part of the game. It's part of this business. Um, but he's an incredible performer and you know as far as the conversations we had that's not mine to talk about if he wants to talk about him that's his business but it's not mine to talk about i'm just thrilled he's here i'm thrilled he's where we're at home here where he should be and um i can't wait to, to like i said about sam punk we're all doing this together that's what's great about this there's a there's a unified movement that everybody seems to be loving and we're all headed in the same direction um it's it's a it's just a massive movement of positive excited young talents and some older that are um, looking to run through a wall to take this to another level as big as it is that are looking to make this beyond anybody's expectations um, of what it can be. And um, I think that mindset, especially people like Chad, you know, Chad came up through the PC and we've worked together for a long time. So his, I know what his expectations are because we helped put it in him. And um, I'm just thrilled that he's here and, and uh, excited to move forward with him. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.